In this video, I will go through the categories that drugs are assigned depending on their relative safety for pregnant women and their baby. Then I will go through the different antibiotic classes and we will say which are safe and appropriate for pregnant patients and which ones are not. First, we'll start off by mentioning the grading system for medication in pregnancy. This is a system that provides risk assessment guidelines for individual medications based on their relative safety for use in pregnancy. It also indicates the potential of a drug to cause birth defects in a fetus during pregnancy. Any medication will be categorized into one of five letters, A, B, C, D or X respectively. And we will go through each of these categories quickly to understand them. The A category is given to medication that have not demonstrated any risk to the fetus when taken in pregnancy. Medication in the A category has undergone extensive testing and has well-documented human studies. It is in essence the safest and best score a medication can get from the grading system. The B category is given to medication that have not demonstrated any risk to fetus in animal reproduction studies. However, there are no well-controlled or documented studies proving its safety in humans. The B category is still considered relatively safe, but it might be lacking in studies. The drugs in the C category have shown harmful effects to the fetus in animal studies, and there are no well-controlled human studies on the drug. So the benefit has to outweigh the risk for the consideration of the drugs in the C category. Otherwise, we should stay away from them. The next category is the category D. And in the D category, there are reports and data that proves human fetal risk and adverse reactions. However, even in the D category, the potential benefit may warrant usage of the drug in pregnant women despite potential risks. Again, here, benefit to risk ratio needs to be considered. The last and the most alarming category is the X category. Its definition is as follows. Studies in animals or humans have demonstrated fetal abnormalities and or there is positive evidence of human fetal risk based on adverse reaction data from investigational or marketing experience. And the risks involved in use of the drug in pregnant women clearly will outweigh potential benefits. So drugs in this category should be completely avoided. Some examples of drugs in this category is atorvastatin and simvastatin, which are common cholesterol-lowering agents, as well as methotrexate. Methotrexate is an immunosuppressor, and this is another example of drug in the X category. All right, so now let's go back to the antibiotic classes and talk about them individually. First off, let's start with the penicillin class. This is appropriate since the penicillins are the first true antibiotics which are discovered. They were discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928. Penicillins are a group of beta-lactam antibiotics. The beta-lactam antibiotics contain a beta-lactam ring in its structure, hence the name. This is important because bacteria may become resistant to these type of antibiotics containing this beta-lactam ring because the bacteria may produce enzymes that can attack the beta-lactam ring structure of those antibiotics. The penicillins is generally considered safe in pregnancy and some of the typical drugs of choice from this category is amoxicillin and ampicillin. However, as I said, some bacterial infections may be resistant towards these kinds of antibiotic. Another consideration is penicillin allergy. Some patients may have a strong allergy to penicillin and develop severe allergic symptoms. However, if the bacteria is a gram-positive non-resistant bacteria and the woman does not have allergic reactions to penicillin, 
then penicillin would be a very good choice for pregnant women. Lastly, let's mention that the mechanism of action of the penicillins is that it targets the bacterial cell wall. They are most effective against gram-positive bacteria. The next class we will talk about is the cephalosporin class. Cephalosporins are closely related to penicillin antibiotics. They are also beta-lactam antibiotics. They are categorized into first, second and third generation cephalosporins. All the generations of cephalosporins are categorized into the B category. So let's recap the B category. The B category stated that these drugs have not demonstrated any risk to the fetus in animal reproduction studies. However, there are no or limited well-controlled studies proving its safety in humans. There are some newer studies that might indicate the increased risk of the fetus developing heart defects because of cephalosporins. However, other studies contradict this. In general, the cephalosporins is a class of antibiotics that is considered safe in pregnancy. The next class that I will talk about is the class of tetracyclines. The tetracyclines are a class of antibiotics that work on the bacterial ribosome. They bind to the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome, and this will inhibit the bacterial protein synthesis. They are considered to be broad-spectrum working antibiotics, and that means that the tetracyclines work well on both gram-positive and gram-negative bacterial species. However, most importantly for this video, for the tetracyclines, we have to remember that the tetracyclines should be avoided during pregnancy and also for young children. It might cause permanent teeth discoloration. They are therefore given the D category, meaning that there are reports and data that prove human fetal risk and adverse reactions. If we can, we want to stay away from tetracycline for pregnant patients and for young children. However, the potential benefit may warrant usage of the drug in pregnant women despite potential risks. Benefit to risk ratio needs to be considered. The next class are aminoglycosides. The aminoglycoside antibiotic also works by inhibiting bacterial protein synthesis. Even though they are considered broad-spectrum antibiotics, the aminoglycosides are mostly effective against aerobic bacterial species. High yield to remember is that aminoglycosides does not work against anaerobic species, since the antibiotic will not cross the membrane of anaerobic types of bacteria. So what is an aerobic bacteria? Well, aerobic means that the bacterial species depends on oxygen. And vice versa, an anaerobic means that the bacterial species thrives without oxygen. And in anaerobic species, oxygen will actually be harmful to these bacteria. Some known side effects of these drugs, important to remember, are Autotoxicity. Autotoxicity means that they can be harmful for the ears. And nephrotoxicity. Nephrotoxic means that these drugs could damage the kidneys. So remember, autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity for aminoglycosides. They might harm the kidneys and the ears of patients. When it comes to pregnancy, there have been some reports of various fetal problems, such as hearing loss. Therefore, these should systemically not be prescribed to pregnant women unless there are no suitable alternatives. And the benefit have to outweigh the risk, as always. Gentamicin, which is an aminoglycoside, has the pregnancy category D because it is an injectable medication but it can also be given topically, and then it would have the category C. 
Now that we covered aminoglycosides, let's continue with the next class known as macrolides. The macrolides are bacteriostatic antibiotics, which acts by binding to the 50S subunit of bacterial ribosomes. Thereby, they inhibit a translocation step of protein synthesis, and thereby they inhibit protein synthesis. They are considered broad-spectrum antibiotic, and they are bacteriostatic, but can also be bactericidal in large doses. An important side effect to know about macrolides is that they potentially may cause heart arrhythmia. This is because they can prolong the QT interval, and this can be seen on an ECG, and those with ECG abnormalities should be careful when administering macrolides. And heart patients may not be good candidates for macrolide therapy. In pregnancy, macrolides can be a good alternative for ladies who are allergic to penicillin. They are generally considered safe. Examples of macrolides are azithromycin and erythromycin. These both have assigned the pregnancy category B. The next class that we will talk about are the fluoroquinolones. These are a unique class of antibiotics that work by inhibiting DNA replication and causing DNA cleavage. The fluoroquinolones are broad-spectrum antibiotics that are often prescribed for urinary tract infections as well as respiratory infections. In pregnancy, we avoid using fluoroquinolones. They are given the pregnancy category C. Important side effects in usage of fluoroquinolones are those of problems with tendons, joints, and in some predisposed patients, even big vessels. There seem to be an increased risk for tendon rupture in patients using fluoroquinolones as well as dissection of the aorta in predisposed patients such as those with Marfan syndrome. Dissection of the aorta is a life-threatening condition. Next up, we will talk about the lincomycin antibiotic class. The lincomycin work similarly to macrolides, so they also bind to the 50S subunit of bacterial ribosomes. Clindamycin is a good example of a lincomycin antibiotic. It is generally considered safe in pregnancy and is given the pregnancy category B. So remember, clindamycin is a safe option and it's a type of lincomycin. The last class that we will discuss are the carbapenem antibiotics. These are synthetic beta-lactam antibiotics and they differ in structure from penicillins. An example of a carbapenem is imipenem. They are considered broad spectrum. However, there are not sufficient testing for the carbapenems to determine its safety in pregnant women as of now. So these should not be given to pregnant women unless the benefit outweighs the risk. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was of help for you. And if you want to see more of these videos, then please subscribe to our channel. Thank you and see you in the next video.